Happy 4th of July and thanks so much for staying up late with us. I'm Tim Pham. It's been nearly three decades since fireworks were banned throughout most of Spokane County, except for a handful of cities. Launching your own displays can land you some hefty fines, and we wanted to know more about how exactly that ban is in force. Our Casey Decker looked into it. As we've reported in the past, in the city of Spokane, the fine for fireworks possession is just over $500. And in the unincorporated parts of the county, it varies depending on severity, but can go up to $1,000. The first thing we wanted to know is how many calls to the police actually result in fines. SPD told us they don't actually really keep numbers on that, but they did outline the procedure for how they decide whether to respond to calls. The main factor, how much of a danger the fireworks pose. So let's say a call comes into crime check complaining about fireworks nearby. If the police can tell from the call that there's a real danger to other people, it's an automatic police response. Somebody is going to get sent. If there's no clear danger to people, but there is a threat to property, it'll be a fire department response. That means the fire marshal might be the one who can issue that fine. If there's no immediate danger to either people or to property, there'll be a general broadcast on the scanner. That means any officers in the area will go check it out if they can, but it's not an immediate response. And of course, all of that will depend on the call load, how busy the police are already. The officers will be making a lot of case by case decisions. Now, there are a few places where some fireworks still are legal on private property, Airway Heights, Deer Park and Medical Lake within the county. In some other eastern Washington counties, they're legal as well. And in most of North Idaho, small fireworks are good to go. We've got the specifics for all of that up on creme.com. But if you're in the city of Spokane or the unincorporated county, don't try your luck tonight. Not only could you see those fines, if you start a fire, you could be held liable for any damage you cause and the cost of the fire department responding to it. For Krem 2 News, I'm Casey Decker. Thanks so much, Casey. Well, perfect temperatures today to barbecue or spend the 4th of July out at the lake, and it seems like these warm conditions are sticking around for a while. Meteorologist Michelle Boss is in the Weather Center tonight. Michelle, what can we expect to wrap up this work week? It looks like temperatures are going to be warming up. We've seen temperatures a little bit cooler than average the last couple of days, especially yesterday. We were only in the low to mid 70s, but we warmed up a little bit today. And though we did have a few showers and thunderstorms up in the mountains of northeastern Washington and the northern panhandle, those have all but dissipated as we've worked our way into the later evening hours. So looking pretty quiet for the rest of the night and into tomorrow temperature wise. Couldn't be any better. 70 degrees in Spokane right now. A little bit cooler across the Idaho Panhandle. Temperatures in the lower 60s and still holding on to the middle 70s in Moses Lake and down in Lewiston. Here's a look at the next 12 hours. Temperatures will be gradually settling down to the lower 60s, bottoming out into the middle 50s. And we'll be starting tomorrow off, Friday off, with partly cloudy skies and warming up into the lower 80s. So we'll be partly cloudy 83 tomorrow. Another beautiful day on Saturday 83 and just a little bit cooler on Sunday with highs in the upper 70s. So it is a constant adrenaline rush. There is everything about this to enjoy. Well, that's from a firework official in Spokane. It's one of the highlights of the 4th of July every year. The fireworks, of course, we will see them illuminate the sky a little bit later tonight, but there's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes to make them actually happen. First, you actually need to train. You also have to work with a federal agency. Not anyone can just do this. We met up with Matt King today. That's who you heard from. He's one of the experts who helped put on the show. King is a part of a team of about eight people who set it all up. He's a licensed pyrotechnician, making sure everything is proper and safe. He told us that licenses are required for these shows. One of those agencies involved is the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms. The ATF regulates fireworks of this caliber. Ultimately, you have all of your local law enforcement as well, and then you have some chemistry that you need to be able to perform as well. Well, if you're interested in getting involved, King says they're always training people. For more information, head to our website, creme.com. We'll take a look at that. What a great timing. Fireworks just launched off at Riverfront Park in downtown Spokane. People lined the banks of the river downtown just to watch this spectacular display. It's pretty, it's a quite the site to see if you haven't ever been down there and there's so many people a day full of celebration in downtown. There's live entertainment, carnival rides and of course so many great vendors and food and this is just great a great way to celebrate our country's birthday and 
uh, beautiful view downtown on our camera there. We're going to be checking in with this shot throughout the evening. Wow, gorgeous shot there. Well, President Trump threw a 4th of July celebration in Washington, D.C. today. It featured military flyovers and a speech focusing on the strength of our country. Today we come together as one nation with this very special salute to America. We celebrate our history, our people, and the heroes who proudly defend our flag. The president's salute to America featured tanks and military vehicle flyover and vehicles flyovers by the Navy's Blue Angels and uh, pageantry. All branches of the armed forces were on hand. The president's event generated both support and criticism days before the event. Several Democratic candidates accused the president of politicizing De Independence Day, while his supporters say he was just showing patriotism. It's been the president's goal to showcase the country's military since he was inspired by the Bastille Day parade in Paris in 2017. Well, a North Texas teen is honoring his friend with a special tribute. He just mowed an image of the American flag in his front yard. His friend was killed while on duty for the Army last week. He used different settings on his mower to make the grass different lengths and used a weed eater to create the 50 stars. Wow, very creative there. And back here locally, the 4th of July celebration doesn't end just here. Riverfront Parks Carnival actually continues today and throughout the weekend. There are many things to do for all ages. There's live entertainment, carnival rides, and for the adults, a beer garden as well. Sounds like a good time downtown. Well, Southern California saw the strongest earthquake in 20 years. People felt it all the way from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. Authorities say it was a magnitude 6.4 quake. Residents who lived in the town of Ridgecrest, California, were hit the hardest. Items flew off the shelves in supermarkets, roads were cracked, and there were widespread power outages. I was here. about half a foot from getting hit in the head with a glass cup falling from the humidor right there. We still have no power. Yeah, just a lot of broken, broken stuff. Wow, scary moments there. The mayor of Ridgecrest, California has declared a state of emergency. Seismologists say things could get worse. They say there is a 1 in 20 chance that there could be an even bigger quake in the next few days. Well, new developments tonight out of Seattle. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services is investigating the mold problem at Seattle Children's Hospital. The agency says it found multiple safety violations. According to the report, the hospital failed to approve and implement an infection prevention plan. We're also learning the hospital did not inspect its airflow monitoring equipment to make sure it worked. Investigators say oversight like this puts patients at risk of infection. You may remember one person died due to this mold issue. Five others are being treated for infection. Hospital administrators created a plan of correction to fix these problems, but it has not yet been approved. Even so, all main operating rooms are reopened today. He saved my son's life. A North Idaho family is praising one local police officer for his quick thinking. About a month ago, the family's son was badly injured in an accident at their home in Rathdrum. The parents would later learn their son was only minutes away from dying, but he was saved all thanks to the actions of one Rathdrum police officer. Krem 2's Taylor Vito spoke with the family and the police officer he says is credited with keeping their son alive. He's just, he loves everybody, and he'll tell you. Nick Zucker is one lucky guy. Not only lucky to be with us today, but also fortunate to be surrounded by those who love him. He loves donuts. He loves donuts, <laughs> and he'll ask you what your favorite donut is. That's his favorite question. That's dad, David, alongside mom, Mona. This is a recent photo of David and Nick, and there's a reason David has that smile. It's a hospital visit that was potentially minutes away from being non-existent. I got a phone call from my daughter saying that um, Nicholas was injured. Nick, who's mentally disabled, lives at a home in Rathdrum and has a caregiver. On Memorial Day, he accidentally broke a window and severely cut his arm. It was bad. David, who's a retired paramedic, says it was something even he couldn't see. It's, <laughs> it's always different. You know, when it's yours. Nick was losing massive amounts of blood, but before his dad got on scene, someone else showed up. Someone who turned out to be a local hero. And he was absolutely blue-gray pale, 
and um, completely lethargic. That's Scott Kennedy Sr., a Rathdrum PD officer. He'd been notified of the 911 call and the situation. Kennedy responded to the home. I, I asked, you know, what happened? He said bleeding everywhere. I could see blood just everywhere. Knowing that time was essential, Officer Kennedy took out one of these, a tourniquet. He brought it out from his rig when he had heard of the call. And then I slid the tourniquet up above the wound and, and cranked it down. I told him this is going to hurt a little bit, but it's better than dying, buddy. I, I really, it was kind of, kind of in shock a little bit. Nick was then rushed to the hospital. There, it wasn't looking good right away. Docs told the family Nick might not make it since he had lost so much blood. He said, I don't know if you realize how serious this is. But slowly, things started to change. Nick, you see, was a fighter. And despite all that blood loss, he came around. They told me that um, if it wasn't for Officer Kennedy putting a tourniquet on his arm, he wouldn't have made it. The family says if Officer Kennedy were one minute too late, Nick could have been gone. He's now recovering, and Kennedy says he's since connected with Nick. You might not realize it, but cops are lifesavers too, and situations like these are ones Kennedy received special training for. It's just a new thing every day. I mean, I wasn't expecting this to have happened to, you know, that day. The Zookers? Well, they're forever thankful to Officer Kennedy, because if it wasn't for him, they couldn't hug Nick one more time. He saved my son's life. In Rathdrum, Taylor Vido, Crem 2 News.